Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakas, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Monday in the first week after Epiphany. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Our lesson comes from the letter to the Hebrews, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels spirits in the divine service, sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Here ends the lesson. Our lesson today comes from the letter to the Hebrews. The structure of this letter does not follow the typical structure of a letter, and authorship is still being debated. The authorship has been attributed to Paul, but was questioned as early as the second century. The first four verses set the tone for what follows. What was said would have been familiar to the audience and served to reinforce what they all knew to be true. It appears from verses that will be read tomorrow, that some to whom the letter is addressed are questioning the lordship of Jesus based on what is happening in their lives. The author states that Jesus, God's Son, was appointed heir of all things. The Son is the exact representation of God's essential being. This stands in opposition to some who claimed that the emperor was considered to be heir of all things. The author writes with confidence that God's purposes would be realized. This was not based on observation of the current situation of public condemnation, arrest, and loss of property in which they find themselves, but is based on what God had revealed through Jesus, who suffered death on earth before being exalted in glory. The author assures his listeners that the Son is superior to the angels and He is to be worshipped by the angels. His throne is eternal. 
The quotation we found in verses 8 to 9 is derived from Psalm 45, which describes the final triumph of God's messianic king. The writer extended this citation further than the previous ones, no doubt because the statements of the psalmist served well to highlight truths on which the author of Hebrews desired to elaborate. The king the psalmist described had loved righteousness and hated wickedness. This points to the holiness and obedience of Christ while he was on earth, to which reference will be repeatedly made later in the letter to the Hebrews. The immutability of the king's son is stressed in verses 10 to 12, which are quotes from Psalm 102, which read, Long ago you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. They will all wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing, and they pass away, but you are the same, and your years have no end. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. Your royal scepter is a scepter of equity. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. The writer brings this section to a climax with the final Old Testament quotation, which is crucial to the entire thought expressed in this epistle. It comes from Psalm 110, which the author later used in his elaboration of the Melchizedek priesthood of Jesus. If Jesus is to have an eternal throne, such a victory obviously awaits him. But the victory is his and not the angels. The angels' role is to serve those who will inherit salvation. Let us pray. Our closing prayer today will be Canticle 21, You Are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 o'clock or 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.